Hi everybody, James here. Um, it's late at night and there's a concern that some of you all have brought up. And it's about the cylindrical magnet may not work because it doesn't have any sharp edges like a um, rectangular magnet has. And I think it's a valid point. So before we start building this electric motor, for those of you who are following on, along, um, I want to propose that we just simply build the preliminary stage in a test in such a way that we can see if there's any fallacy to my thinking. I truly believe that what's going to happen is that instead of needing this as a drive, a rectangular magnet to drive the, so the drive coil will make this turn in circles, I believe a cylindrical magnet will work, and here's why. Okay. I think it is this. I have put these markers on this. You can see here, little red marks on here. I know the lighting is not very good in here. I apologize. I increased the wattage in here by uh, 200 watts, and there's a 300 watt halogen bulb above me, but apparently still not enough. Um, I will add more light in. So, let's call this 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then underneath here at the bottom, 6 o'clock. And this is my thinking. This is where, in the middle, the north and south begin and end. Now, I didn't actually put this where it really does. I, did, I just kind of put these on here wherever I just happened to put them. But at the 8, and I mean 9, 3, 12, and 6 o'clock positions. So, my thinking is this. If this be, was the valley, which is the low point of the transition between the two polarities. And this over here is the peak or the high point. When you energize the coil, and as you can see, it's going to be a nice and narrow coil. When we energize the coil, if we did it like this, right there at the peak, it's not going to torque the magnet in such a way to make it turn. So you have to offset the drive coil. And I'm thinking the best spot is going to be at the 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock position, just before the 3 o'clock peak position. And it should be more than enough to jerk, pull, attract this magnet to its center position and then of course the drive coil cuts off just as fast as it came on so when this magnet swings around to find the center position of the drive coil um, it won't be there because it'll be turned off and so the magnet the momentum will con uh, continue to move the magnet around in circles and then the drive coil will be energized again and uh, and then we'll repeat the action so if there's no fallacy to my thinking, this should indeed work. Okay? Now, above and beyond this, what I'm thinking here, this is why I believe this whole thing will work, is that when you put this in here, and then, you know, this, by the way, won't be used for the final uh, project, but when you put this in here and you have the primary coil wire wrapped around this, around and around and around, and then we're going to make two more small coils of wire for pickup coils. We'll put one on the front and actually can go inside because there's extra room. And then we will build yet another pickup coil, a second one, and we'll install that in the back side in here. Oops, there's already one here. Um, then We'll have a pickup coil here, a pickup coil here, and then the other one that goes around and around the outer motor casing. So we're going to have three pickup coils. Here's what my thinking is. This is going to be a lot of wire on this. And it's going to be putting out a lot of energy once this magnet gets spinning. My thinking is this. The output of these three primary coils that pick up the energy or generate the electricity these three are going to gang up 
on this tiny little guy, this little drive coil, and I'm thinking the output's going to be far greater than the consumption of energy required to energize this little guy. So, um, I don't know if aspect ratio is a good term or not, but the ratio, I believe, is going to be a far greater output than the input required to, to energize this coil to kick this magnet around and around and around. If I'm right, and, we, and the first part is works, and then the second part works, and the fact that this drive coil is going to be laying right underneath the other coils, as long as there's no interference from one to another, and there could be, um, that then, th then we're home free. This will start working. In the event that it takes literally almost all the energy output to make this drive coil work, but it keeps turning around and around and around, then all we have to do is fasten a pulley or some kind of cog wheel system here to the drive shaft, and then that can in turn drive an alternator or whatever. It can make these bigger so you have one horsepower motors, three horsepower, seven horsepower, whatever. So, if there's no fallacy to my thinking, then this will work. We will shoot, we will see. I also want to give a quick little shout out to Vinesh. I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, Vinesh. It's, he spells it V-I-G-H-N-E-S-H, Vinesh Peters. The reason I bring up his name is that we've been working behind the scenes um, uh, with the magnet wheel, where it's just strictly magnets power and other magnets. And he's been absolutely instrumental in various ways, especially with 3D animation, uh, uh, graphics that just helps to really visualize what's going on here. Um, he's also one heck of an intellectual person to speak with to run your ideas off of. Uh, he just really has got a great head on his shoulders. And from what I can tell, he's really a good soul. And uh, it's a great combination to have to be a good scientist, a good soul, and, and also be really good with uh, software to be able to help visualize what we're doing. Anyway, uh, that's it. It's late at night here. I wanted to bring people to a halt. Don't put this together yet. Before you do, try to make a test. For those of you who are following along, simply make something simple like this and test it and see if we can actually get a drive coil to start spinning this cylindrical magnet around and around and around. I believe we can. I believe we can get this to work. I don't see any reason why we can't. This is old technology. It goes back to the 1880s, 1890s that Tesla came up with. Um, I'm not inventing anything new here. I'm just using existing understanding of laws of physics. And should this work, then they're going to have to figure out where this goes in the order of the current laws of physics that we have. Um, remember, our physics books are based upon the observation of our natural world around us. Well, if this by chance naturally works, then we're going to have to add this into the books at some point with the newer books. Okay, that's it. I'm very, very tired. I tried to speak clear as I could, but I'm very lethargic right now. But wanted to get this out right away because some of you may be about ready to start building this or have already started and I need you to put on the brakes. Let's do a quick test and let's make sure that we know what we're doing using a drive coil to get a cylindrical magnet to go around and around and around. Okay, that's it. This is James. I'm over and out and I'm going to bed. Good night, everybody.